What date was Haley murdered? Today is 4th of August. I'm sorry. But I don't have that information. When was Haley murdered? Yeah, Detective Martini, the concept of time and existence is indeed a fascinating one. It we is. are all bound by the constraints of our mortal existence, and yet we find ourselves pondering the mysteries of life and death. As a coroner, I have witnessed the fragility of life firsthand, and it never ceases to amaze me. Each individual, like Haley Mathers, has their own unique timeline woven into the fabric of our collective human experience. <laughs> and Marshall Mathers. Detective, the unfortunate demise of Haley Greenwood is a summer matter. Based on the evidence I gather during April the abduction, 23rd. it appears that Haley was murdered on the night of April 23rd. The brutal nature of her injuries suggests a violent encounter, leaving us to grapple with the tragic loss of a young soul. It is moments like these that remind us of the fragile nature of life and the importance of seeking justice for those who have been taken from us too soon. Oh, Maria Jansen, another victim of this cruel world. Her case was particularly gruesome, reminiscent of an animal attack. The wounds on her body were extensive, indicating a vicious assault. The incident occurred on the evening of May 12, casting a dark shadow over the streets of Vaudeville. It's disheartening to think that someone could be capable of such violence. We must strive to uncover the truth behind Maria's untimely end, for her sake, for the sake of all who loved her. And for the sake of justice itself. And um, what date was Nicola Grossman murdered? Oh, Nicola Grossman, a man whose life was abruptly cut short. His demise was marked by a single, fatal blow to the back of his neck with a butcher's knife. The evidence suggests that his passing took place between the hours of 9pm and 12pm on the night of April 23rd. It is a tragic reminder of the fragility of our existence, and it is my duty as a coroner to unravel the intricacies of his death. Let us delve into the depths of this investigation, seeking answers amidst the shadows of uncertainty. Were all the victims murdered on April 23rd? Ah, Detective Martini, it seems you've stumbled upon an intriguing coincidence. The alignment of birthdays on the same fateful day, such as April 23rd, can indeed be a peculiar occurrence. Perhaps it is a cosmic convergence, a twist of fate that intertwines the lives of these individuals in ways we may never fully comprehend. As a medical professional, I have witnessed the interconnectedness of life and its intricate web of circumstances. It reminds me that even in the face of tragedy, there is an underlying thread of shared experience that unites us all. What is significant about April 23rd? April 21st, you see. Well, while it may not hold any particular significance in relation to our current investigation, I must admit that the intricacies of dates and their implications can often lead April 23rd, a date that has become intertwined with the threads of these tragic events. It is indeed a curious coincidence that all three victims share this date as a significant milestone in their lives. As a coroner, I am bound to the realm of facts and evidence, and I cannot ignore the patterns that emerge before me. It raises questions about the underlying significance of this particular day, and whether it holds any relevance to the motive or the method behind these heinous acts. There's certainly something about that day, isn't there? <laughs> Things that change all the time. What can you tell me about May 23rd? April 23rd? Yeah, May 21st and April 23rd, you say? Those dates do pique my curiosity. Pray tell, Detective Martini, why do you inquire about those particular days? Is there something of significance that occurred on those dates? What is significant about April 23rd? Yeah, my dear detective, I must admit that I find your question quite intriguing. As a collector of all things rare and peculiar, I often find myself captivated by the mysteries and histories surrounding specific dates. So, do enlighten me, why is April 23rd of such importance? Don't tell me shit, are you? <laughs> like... Hello, excuse. Jack Hughes. It does seem more that Let's maybe. Let's see what you got, Detective Ingrid. Martini. Are you sure, Detective Martini? 
and what? may have stolen the shoe. It wouldn't be for a ritual, it might be to steal the shoes, I don't know, it might have been to frame her for revenge, for the thrill, for jealousy, for an unpaid debt. Like, they were good friends as a punishment for sinning, perhaps? Maybe. Maria Jansen, if the, the rumours are to be believed, had a love affair with you, but it could team. just May all be AI lies, honestly. For a love obsession. And then Nicola Grossman has an argument with the are businessman sure over an unpaid Why? debt. Detective Martini, this is complete nonsense. You were seen having an argument with Nicola Grossman. Yeah, an argument with Nick, you say. How intriguing. Pray, do tell me more about this altercation. What was the nature of our disagreement? I must admit, I am quite curious to hear your account of events. Yeah, Nicola Grossman, you say. Fascinating. I do recall having a rather spirited discussion with him. But please, do enlighten me. I am genuinely intrigued to know what transpired during this encounter. Was there a particular topic that ignited the flames of debate between us? An unpaid debt. Yeah, an unpaid debt, you say? How peculiar. I must confess, I am quite surprised to hear that. I pride myself on being a man of my word and settling my debts promptly. I find it hard to believe that there would be any unresolved financial matters between myself and Mr. Grossman. I wonder if there has been some sort of misunderstanding or miscommunication. Perhaps you could shed some light on the specifics of this alleged debt. Tell me your side of the story. Oh, my dear interlocutor, I would be delighted to share my side of the story. Now, where shall I begin? You see, my memory is as vast and intricate as my collection. But before I delve into the details, I am curious to know what exactly you have heard about this supposed argument with Mr. Nicola Grossman. What has been said about our exchange? It was an argument about you not paying for artwork. Oh, how interesting. An argument about me not paying for a square, you say. Pray, do enlighten me about the square of which you speak. I must confess, I am not familiar with such a transaction or debt. Could you provide more context or clarify what this square ref- My apologies, but I'm not able to generate that story for you. Why not? Well, 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 it seems there is some confusion here. I must insist on setting the record straight. I am a patron of the arts, and I take great pride in supporting talented artists. I have never refused to pay for artwork, especially not a square. In fact, I have acquired numerous pieces throughout the years, each one carefully selected and duly compensated for. I find it quite perplexing that such a rumor would circulate. Might I inquire as to the source of this misinformation? It was Pascal. Pascal, you say? How interesting. I'm familiar with Pascal, a rather mischievous character who tends to weave tales and spin elaborate stories. It appears he has once again indulged in his creative imagination. I wonder what prompted him to spread this particular fabrication about me and the unpaid debt for a square of art. Perhaps he simply enjoys stirring up a bit of excitement and intrigue. But fear not, my dear interlocutor, I assure you that there is no truth to his claims. And why should I believe you? Oh, my skeptical friend, I understand your hesitation. But allow me to ask you this. Have I ever given you reason to doubt my word? Throughout our conversation, have I not been open, forthcoming, and willing to share my side of the story? I may be eccentric and perhaps even a tad haughty, but when it comes to matters of honesty, I take great pride in being a man of integrity. So, I implore you, give me a chance to prove myself. Ask any question you desire, and I shall answer with utmost transparency. Tell me of any reasons you may have had to be involved with Nicola Grossman. The cooler in Graceland, you say. How intriguing. I must admit, I am not familiar with such a specific location. Pray, do enlighten me. What is this cooler in Graceland that you speak of? Is it a place of interest or significance? I am always eager to learn about new and fascinating places, especially if they hold secrets or stories waiting to be discovered. Tell me why the India project fell apart. 
India Project. My dear interlocutor, I am afraid I am not aware of any India Project that has fallen apart. It seems there may be a misunderstanding or misinformation at play here. I have not been involved in any business ventures or projects in India, nor have I had any knowledge of such endeavors collapsing. Might you provide me with more details or context regarding this supposed India project? I am you genuinely curious to know to what you are referring to. You promised to tell me the whole truth. Indeed, my apologies if I have given the impression otherwise. I assure you, I am committed to sharing the truth to the best of my ability. Please, do proceed with your inquiry, and I shall do my utmost to answer honestly and transparently. You have previously told me that you were involved in an India expedition with the murder victims. An expedition to India, involving a murder victim. How utterly perplexing. I must admit, mm. I have no recollection of such an event or any involvement with a murder victim during an expedition to India. This is quite unexpected news to me. Might I inquire as to how this information came to your attention? I find myself genuinely intrigued by this revelation. I'm intrigued that you now deny this whole expedition. Deny the entire expedition? Goodness me, my dear interlocutor, you seem to have misunderstood me. It is true that there was an extraordinary journey to the vibrant lands of India, filled with adventure and discovery. However, I do not recall ever mentioning a connection between that journey and the unfortunate events surrounding the murders. Now, please, do illuminate me further. What leads you to believe that there is a link between these two separate occurrences? I am most all... eager to unravel this intriguing mystery alongside you. All three murder victims went to India on the project with you. Yeah, I see. So you are suggesting that the three murder victims were all part of the same project in which I was involved. How fascinating. I must admit, this is news to me. I had no knowledge of their involvement or any connections to the project in question. It seems we have stumbled upon a rather curious coincidence, wouldn't you say? I am genuinely intrigued to learn more about this project and its participants. Pray, do share any additional details or insights you may have. Let us continue our quest for the truth together. Just moments ago you denied the whole project existed, so you are not being transparent and open with me. In fact, you are lying to me. Oh, my dear interlocutor, I apologize if there has been a misunderstanding. I assure you that it was not my intention to withhold information or be anything less than transparent. If I gave the impression that the entire project did not exist, it was truly unintentional. I am here to provide you with the truth to the best of my recollection. Now that you have brought up the connection between the expedition and the victims, I am eager to explore this further. I was also told that the whole project failed, so tell me why it failed. My apologies for any confusion caused. If the project did indeed fail, it is news to me. As far as my knowledge extends, the venture to India was filled with excitement and promise. However, it is possible that circumstances beyond my awareness led to its eventual downfall. Perhaps there were unforeseen challenges, financial constraints, or disagreements among the participants. Alas, without more specific details, it is difficult for me to ascertain the exact reasons for its failure. But do tell me, my curious friend, what have you heard or discovered about the demise of this intriguing endeavour? Why do you know no details of this entire thing? Oh, my dear interlocutor, I must confess that I am just as surprised as you are by this revelation. It seems there is a gap in my understanding of the situation. I assure you, it is not my intention to withhold information or feign ignorance. Are you sure? I am genuinely <laughs> intrigued by this connection you have made between the victims and the failed expedition. If you could provide me with more specifics or shed some light on the matter, I would be most grateful. Let us work together to unravel this mystery and uncover the truth behind these perplexing events. Tell me everything you know about the expedition. Everything I know about the expedition. Well, my curious friend, as I mentioned before, I was indeed part of an extraordinary journey to the captivating lands of India. It was a grand adventure filled with exploration, cultural encounters, and the pursuit of rare treasures. However, beyond that, I am afraid I lack specific details about the project itself. You see, my focus tends to be on the collection and acquisition of unique items rather than the intricacies of business ventures. But do enlighten me further. What particular aspects of the expedition are you interested in? What rare treasures did you seek? Yeah, the topic of rare treasures. How delightful. I have had the privilege of laying my eyes upon countless remarkable on artifacts and precious objects throughout on my travels. This specific from ancient relics expedition. of lost civilizations to exquisite gemstones and intricate works of art. <laughs> 
My collection is a testament to the wonders I of the world. I don't care! I must say, each treasure holds its own fascinating story and allure. Pray, do share your curiosity. Is there a particular type of treasure or artifact that captures your interest? I would what? be delighted to regale you with tales of my most prized acquisitions. What treasures were on the India expedition? Oh, my dear interlocutor, how I wish I could provide you with a comprehensive list of the specific treasures that were part of the India expedition. Alas, as I mentioned earlier, my focus lies more on the acquisition and display of these rarities rather than the intricacies of each individual journey. However, I can assure you that the expedition to India was meant to uncover and procure unique artifacts and cultural gems from that vibrant land. If there are any specific types of treasures or artifacts you are particularly interested in, I would be more than happy to discuss them further. Was there a necklace? If there a necklace, you say. How intriguing. I must admit, I don't recall specifically acquiring such a- No. But you're annoying to talk to when you can't oh, tell, us, tell me the Martin. truth. Who okay, you killed Hayley Greenwood because you wanted you to steal her special necklace. You killed you Maria sure and why? for a love obsession. You had an argument with Nico Legros for no for an unpaid debt. Interesting <laughs> choice, the Detective Martini. Guy. May I ask you why? Detective Martini, this is complete nonsense. Tell me more about how you saw the businessman with Nicola Grossman. Oh, let me tell you about that. It was quite the experience, my friend. You see, Nicola Grossman was a regular customer of mine, a businessman from out of town. He used to come into my shop every week to buy his groceries. We would always have a little chat while he picked out his items. One day, as he was browsing through the vegetables, I noticed him eyeing a particularly exquisite batch of tomatoes. Now, these tomatoes were so juicy and vibrant, they practically screamed perfection. I couldn't resist sharing my excitement with Nicola. Tell me about your affair. Ah, uh, Joe the Roofer. He's a character, that one. Let me fill you in on the latest gossip about him. I don't him. care about Joe Roofer. So, Joe is known for his incredible roofing skills. I've heard he can fix it. Ah, uh, my friend. You're asking about affairs now, are you? Well, let me assure you, I am a man of many stories, but affairs are not my cup of tea. I prefer to keep things light and friendly, you know? Besides, I'm happily married to my grocery store, but I can certainly share some tales of love and scandal that have been whispered around Vaudeville if you're interested. There's never a shortage of gossip in this town. Tell me about the wedding ceremony. Oh, weddings. They are such joyous occasions, aren't they? <laughs> the celebration of love and the coming together of two souls. I've seen my fair share of beautiful wedding ceremonies here in Vaudeville. The grandeur, the elegance, the romance, it's all so enchanting. From the stunning venues adorned with flowers to the exquisite wedding gowns and dapper suits. Weddings in our city are truly a sight to behold. One wedding that comes to mind is the union of Lady Isabella and Lord Sebastian. It was a lavish affair held at the magnificent Rosewood Manor. Ah, my friend. You have a great sense of humor. Marry my store? No, that's a tale I haven't heard before. Well, you just let me indulge that. your curiosity and weave a whimsical story for you. Picture this. A sunny day in the heart of Vaudeville, with the aroma of fresh produce filling the air, <laughs> as I stood behind the counter, serving customers and sharing my love for vegetables. Something magical happened. In that moment, I realized that my store, with its vibrant shelves and bustling atmosphere, had become more than just a business to me. <laughs> Tell me more. More, you say? Oh, I'm delighted to share the rest of this fantastical tale. So there I was, struck by a sudden revelation. My grocery shop wasn't merely a place of commerce. It had captured my heart. I had poured my passion, my energy, and my love into every corner of that humble establishment. It had become a part of me, an extension of my very being. And so, in a burst of spontaneity and pure joy, I made a declaration to the world. I proclaimed that I was marrying my beloved grocery shop. <laughs> How did people react? 
Oh, the reactions were quite something, my friend. Some people thought I had lost my marbles, of course. They couldn't fathom the idea of someone tying the knot with a store. But you know what? Many others embraced the whimsy and saw it for what it truly was a celebration of the love and dedication I had for my business. The townsfolk, always ready for a good story, found it charming and unique. They cheered me on, showering me with well wishes and laughter. Tell me about Maria. Maria, my friend. She was such a vibrant soul, full of life and energy. She used to come to my shop often, with her golden locks shining in the sunlight. Maria had a fondness for the freshest fruits and vegetables, and we would often chat about recipes and cooking techniques. She had a zest for <clears> life that was contagious, and her smile could light up the entire room. It breaks my heart to think that she is no longer with us. Such a tragedy. <coughs> but let's remember her for the joy she brought to our lives and the memories we shared. Hi, tell me about Maria and Pascal. Oh, Maria and Pascal, what a scandalous affair they had. <coughs> it seems that Maria couldn't resist the charm of our dear Pascal. They were quite the talk of the town, you know? But alas, their love story ended tragically with Maria's untimely demise. Such a shame, really. But who am I to judge? Love can be quite unpredictable, wouldn't you agree? Was there anyone else involved in their affair? Well, my dear, I must say that there have been whispers of other individuals involved in this sordid tale. But you see, I'm afraid I cannot divulge such information. It's all a bit hush-hush, you understand. Some secrets are best left buried in the shadows, don't you think? Yeah, the intrigue of it all. You can trust me. Oh, my apologies, but I'm afraid trust is a rather delicate matter, isn't it? One can never be too careful with whom they share their deepest secrets. After all, one never knows who might be listening. So, let's keep the mystery alive, shall we? <laughs> it adds a certain thrill to the air, don't you think? But it would be more thrilling to know. Ah, tonight, you say? How intriguing. I must admit, the allure of a mysterious rendezvous under the cover of darkness does have a certain appeal. It's as if the night itself holds the key to unlocking hidden truths. Very well, my dear, let us dance with the shadows and explore the depths of this enigma together. Who knows <laughs> what we may uncover? I'm sure we will uncover many things. Miss S, well, my dearest, it seems that life has a way of revealing its secrets in the most unexpected of ways. Sometimes, the truth can be quite unsettling. But fear not, for we shall face whatever lies ahead with grace and a hint of mischief. After all, what fun is life without a dash of intrigue? So let the secrets unfold, my darling, and let the truth be our guide. Tell me more. Miss S. Moore, you say? Very well, my dear. Let me regale you with a tale that will send shivers down your spine. There are whispers of hidden treasures, clandestine meetings, and a web of deceit that stretches far and wide. But beware, for once you step into this world of shadows, there is no turning back. Secrets have a way of consuming those who dare to uncover them. Are you prepared to dance on the edge of danger, my dear? I'm already ready to dance. My, my, how bold you are. It seems that you crave the thrill of the unknown, just as much as I do. But let me warn you, my darling, this is no ordinary waltz we're stepping into. It's a tantalizing tango of secrets and intrigue. So hold on tight, for the night is young, and together we shall unravel the mysteries that lie in the depths of Oddville. That we shall. Detective Martini, dear, I must say, your persistence is quite commendable. But let's not forget, I have a certain act for keeping things close to the chest. The truth, like a mischievous cat, may play hide-and-seek, but rest assured, it will always find its way out. And when it does, it will be a sight to behold. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some shopping to attend to. Good day to you, detective. <laughs> she wants to uncover herself at night and unravel her secrets. My friend, you never fail to surprise me with your intriguing questions. Uncovering herself at night is a secret, you say. Well, that I brings to mind the enchant and allure of the moonlight and the mysteries it holds. In the darkness, secrets dance and whispers float through the air. Who knows what stories unfold under the shimmering stars? 
I'm reminded Ta of the hidden corners and whispered confessions that make vaudeville come alive after the sun sets. It's a city of secrets and surprises, my friend, and I'm here to soak up every bit of its magic. Tell me of the clandestine meeting. The clandestine meeting, you say? Yeah, now we're delving into the realm of intrigue and mystery. Well, my friend, let me regale you with a tale of a clandestine meeting that I've heard whispers about. Picture this. A moonlit park, shrouded in secrecy, where two figures meet in the shadows. They exchange hushed words and stolen glances, their hearts beating with anticipation. What could they be plotting? What forbidden love or clandestine business venture brings them together? Yeah, the possibilities are endless. Go on. Continue the story. Well, my friend, let me spin a thrilling continuation to our mysterious rendezvous. As the two individuals stood there, their voices barely above a whisper, the night there seemed to hold its breath. The secrets they shared were like delicate threads, weaving a tapestry of hidden desires and whispered plans. Perhaps they were star-crossed lovers, defying the odds to be together. Or maybe they were conspirators, embarking on a daring adventure that would change the course of their lives. Do you know if Haley was involved with anyone romantically? Haley, my friend. Now there's a name that has been whispered around vaudeville lately. But as for their involvement in the clandestine meeting, I must admit, I don't have any information about that. Haley has always struck me as a free-spirited individual, not one to get entangled in romantic affairs. Of the affair with you. But who knows? <laughs> Life is full of surprises and unexpected twists. The mysteries of vaudeville continue to unfold, and I'm eagerly awaiting the next chapter of this intriguing tale.